All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 31st of August in the year of our Lord, 2023. One day closer to his return, his soon return. Uh, his sign, the signs he gave us point to it. The explosion of lawlessness and the apostasy of believers, or nominally believers, people that call themselves or are called Christians. <sighs> Okay, but, well, this, that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, because Jesus Christ is separating the wheat from the chaff. There are many people who have in the past identified as Christians for various reasons, uh, and now when it's very unpopular and uh, there's, they're subject to persecution in the United States, we're being persecuted for being Bible-believing born-again Christians, yes. You can lose your business, you can lose your job. Yeah, because you don't go with the agenda of Satan and adopt satanic lifestyles. The uh, who is He is the father of the race of Adam. Adam joined himself to Satan's rebellion, and because of that, he was cut off from God. He died. His relationship with God died. And all his descendants are born without that relationship with God that is necessary. Okay, uh, first, I want to do two quick videos. This one, God help me to do a quick video. You know, <laughs> I have difficulty with that. Uh, first of all, the uh, I did a video just recently about the necessity of the new birth. Uh, it, I was just thinking this morning that the new birth has been so mischaracterized uh, among those who emphasize that, which has been evangelicalism, a traditional evangelicalism, not the, not the Rick Warren, uh, seeker-sensitive, Bill Hybels, uh, worldly, sinner-sensitive, we don't care about Christ and the cross, Christianity. No, it's, uh, but traditionally, there's been a tendency to misunderstand it as some sort of an emotional conversion experience. And that's the only way the world and the unsaved can understand it. Because you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you've been born again. I mean, you cannot behold spiritual things. They're foolishness to you. And <clears throat> there's been a lot of foolishness uh, in fundamentalist and evangelical circles for a long time, too. And, and we also tend to project our own experience on it. Uh, some of us have had a, a, an emotional experience, uh, but profound, deep, and it's not the emotion is simply a, a, a result of it. It's not the cause. Uh, it is not based, uh, being born again is not an emotional thing. It is not a mental thing. It is, it is the work of God in you at a spiritual level, the new creation, and you might start to realize soon that there are some things that are changed. It's like, what's going on? Uh, something's changed. I don't understand what it is, especially if you weren't raised in that environment where that was preached, like like I was raised in a Lutheran environment that knew nothing of it. Uh, there, the regeneration was simply a doctrine about what happens when they sprinkle you as an infant. Well, since I didn't have it, and I was sprinkled, obviously their baptism is ineffectual. Oh, they'll have an argument, but I know the truth. Yeah. No, it wasn't there. Uh, no, but, but the idea, I, I, I don't want to give people the idea that it is some sort of experience that we look for. Uh, to seek to be born again. That is not how you're saved. 
You're not saved by seeking that. You're saved by faith in Christ. It is, and, and somebody, and I heard a preacher, I think it was this last Sunday, mentioned something like that. And sort of like, unless you can identify a certain event in your life, a certain time when you became a Christian. Well, for some people, it simply is not like that. So that's a, an area, uh, you know, projecting people's personal experience onto things without searching the Scripture and presenting God's truth. It's so easy to do. It's so easy to do. We think, this is how I was saved. This is the circumstances. So if you're saved, you, you experienced something like I did. No. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, the way I was saved was outside the church and after a uh, very difficult system a situation but it was not I didn't know exactly what happened I knew something happened I knew I had a different relationship with God I had peace with God when I was saved the Holy Spirit what he did was present the gospel to me suddenly I knew that Jesus Christ had died for my sins and because of that my sins past present and future and because of that, I was right with God. I had peace with God. God had accepted me permanently. And, of course, that'll bring some emotion, but I, I did not know anything that that was this born-again thing. If you want to know whether you're born again, turn to 1 John in the Bible, because John wrote that, that, that epistle, that letter, in order, he says, I, I've written these things in order that you might know you have eternal life. To, be, to have eternal life is to be born again. To be in a proper relationship with God. Things like loving the brethren. Not loving, uh, not being in love with the world system. Uh, there's a whole list of things in there. And they are characteristics of a person who belongs to Christ. But the the, the first thing is that you have real faith in Christ. Now, people can believe they have faith in Christ. They, they have been taught there ought to have faith in Christ. So if you're asked, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. What do you mean by that? Do you believe, you believe he existed? Do you believe he died on a cross? Do you, you can even believe he died on a cross for the sins of the world. But unless that is personal faith, that, that he died for you, and he's, his, his death atones for your sin. See, as long as it's in an abstract, true faith is, uh, true biblical faith is not abstract. It's personal. It's about your relationship with God through Christ and what he did on the cross. Complete confidence in Christ and what he did. You could almost say it's like uh, casting yourself into the hands of Christ and his finished work that you're not looking to your own work, you're not looking to anything else, you're not looking to what you do, you simply abandon yourself to Christ. You surrender to Christ. That kind of an idea of, of just trusting in Him. Even if you have fear, you know, you're casting yourself on there anyway, because you're doing it in the flesh. And it's it's not. And, and then God will actually give you a, a new kind of faith, too. That's Christ's own faith. He gives you the gifts of Christ, his faith and his, his, uh, in his righteousness. God gives us a righteousness that's not our own. And these are things that are spiritual and our flesh, our, you know, our, our emotions and stuff are not uh, part of that. We, we still are in this old Adamic body. So please do not get the wrong idea that if you didn't have a certain kind of experience, dramatic experience, you're not saved. Uh, fundamentalist Baptists have a tendency to give that idea. No, you, you, can, you can say, well, I don't know when I was saved. The question is, do you have faith in Christ? And the, the tests of that, do you have a... a true relationship with God is read First John. Not only in First John, but the love of the brother. Do you love born-again Bible-believing Christians? I mean, 
not an abstract, but personally. Truly, people that are truly of of Christ and love Christ. Do you do you want do you love them, or do you despise them? The world despises us. The world hates us because we're not of the world. We're of Christ. We've been born again of God. And so don't look for an experience of born again, you know, like uh, classical, like the, the, uh, the Pentecostals and everything else do the same thing several times. Uh, it's not, an ex it's not an, uh, a, a particular experience. So you can say, well, I don't know when I was saved. But the question is not whether you know when you were saved or you had an experience. The question is, do you have real faith in Christ now? That's always where the Bible puts it. Do you trust in Christ and what he did on the cross for your salvation? And the new birth has evidence, and John gives it in 1 John. That's what the purpose of that letter was. Like do, loving the world. Do you love this world? Are you all in for the world? And is Christianity just a, a, a hobby? Well, that's not good. So I, I just wanted to bring this out because I might give you the wrong idea. I don't want to, and I've tried, I think, and many times I've talked about being born again, do not put it together as a particular conversion experience. Because an experience is something we have in the flesh. This is a spiritual work of God in us that's done in conjunction with us casting or putting faith in him and what he did as the sole uh, means of being saved, just casting yourself into his hands. I'm, I'm trying to, to say it, and, which is what I did. I mean, I, I can remember that I had, you know, tried all man's ways. It's like Billy Graham's book out, How to Be Saved, How to Be Born Again. Well, you cannot follow a program, some man's scheme, steps, A, B, C. It's a thing between you and God. Just like you can't follow a book, a recipe book, about how to love your wife. It's not there. It's, it's, about, it's a personal thing between you and God. Christianity is a personal relationship with God through Christ, through faith. It's not an event. When you're born again, that's the beginning of a new life. It's like you can't remember you when you were born into this world. So Christians might not remember when they were born into the kingdom for various reasons. The question is, are you in the kingdom? Do you have true faith in Christ? Don't worry whether or not you were saved with certain, a certain event or had certain emotions or it happened this way, according to somebody. A, B, C. If you didn't do the A, B, and C, you're not saved. That's not true. Do you have real faith in Christ? Because we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It doesn't say we're saved anywhere in the Bible by an experience or an event, other than Christ dying on the cross and rising again. That's the saving event right there, whether we're in that, whether we're in Christ. Are you in Christ? So does, or as, as Paul says, it, do, do you know that his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, dwells in you? Can you, uh, can you sin with no consequences? Because the Father disciplines every child he receives. So if you're his, he will apply discipline if necessary. You will become uncomfortable. He is a good father. Okay, that's all I wanted to say on that. Uh, and I'll, Hey, this has been a short video. I hope that helps. I just don't want people to be confused, especially people who have been saved, who have true faith in Christ, because you didn't have a certain event or go through a certain thing, um, you know, that following a certain pattern that's dictated by the world, 
trust in God's word. Be willing to to buck the trend in the in churchianity uh, or in other Christians. If it didn't happen the same way, it doesn't matter. As long as you have true faith in Christ, as long as He dwells in you, that's the issue, not how you got there. <laughs>